Who here knows what the force is? I'm gonna, we're gonna start off by question and answer because what I want you guys to do is to start thinking a little bit. Okay, is there one force or are there two forces? Who thinks there's two? No one? Who thinks there's one? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask a question. Why would the force help both sides? What? Balance, balance. But it doesn't make sense, right? Because true balance would be to not help either side. Right? So why would it help both sides? What does that mean? That's what we're going to talk about. The philosophy of the force. So the Star Wars was based off of mythology and philosophy. George Lucas studied mythology and philosophy to create the concept of the force. So we know it as the force, but in Eastern disciplines they know it as duality. The concept of yin and yang, light and dark, but it's the two opposites that should not work together that coexist in unity. That is the force, right? And we're going to break this down and see what that means. So this is actually a concept that permeates through life, through all of reality. It's the concept of duality. Uh, one example is when water pours down a drain, it spins in one direction. But there's something called a mirror line. And whenever the energy transfers to the other side of the mirror line, the direction will change. So light side, when it passes through the mirror line, will become the dark side. And dark side, when it passes through the mirror line, will become the light side. They both are a weave, they weave into each other as a figure eight. Right? So if I go to Australia and I watch water go down the drain, it will actually spin in the opposite direction. And if I ask them what is the correct direction for water to spin, they will tell me that their direction is the correct direction, right? Because that's what, what they're used to and that's what they're around. If you ask me what's the correct direction, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say counterclockwise. I don't know which one it actually is, if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. So there is a moment, a transitional point, where one thing goes from one direction to the other. So the best way to understand the force in the beginning is through two circles. We're gonna create two circles. We're going to be, this is your, is this your right? This is your left side, right? Because you're inverted. Okay. So we're going to call this, we'll call this light and we'll call this circle dark. Right? Just for kicks. Light side, dark side. They are spinning in opposite directions from each other. So light side is always spinning this direction. Dark side is always spinning this direction. They're polar opposites. They will never ever meet. Right? Dark side, light side. Now there's a mirror line that happens right in the middle. Upward we'll call light, downward we'll call dark. So light and dark, two circles, light, dark. Now the concept is the figure eight. Even though it's spinning in this direction right here, there's a moment that transitions to the other circle. And you create the infinity symbol. So I'm here. I pass through here, now I'm going one direction. I pass through here, I go the other direction. This is the transitional point between light and dark when you pass through the mirror line. Okay, so we'll start off with this concept. So we'll start off spread out. If you have space with a saber, if not, later on look at the local saber vendors. Everyone's selling awesome sabers and you can learn how to spin and play with, in, with the force yourself. Okay, so first move is you turn a circle. This move is called a circle. It's hard to remember, but it looks like a circle. That's the secret. So this is the most important move in saber spinning. This is the move that no one teaches for some reason because they don't understand the full embodiment of movement. So this is called the circle, right? So beforehand we were talking about up being the light side of the force, down being the dark side of the force. Light side, dark side. In the circle, when I get to the top from the light, it has to fall to go to the dark. From the dark side, it has to rise to go to the light. One side falls, one side rises, but together they make a circle. In this analogy, the circle is the force, or the figure eight is the force the combination of two circles. They're always balanced because it's always a circle. The force doesn't have a difference between light and dark. 
These are human perspectives. What the force favors is resolve. Anyone who has resolve is blessed by the force. If someone believes in what they're doing, the force gives them extra powers. The Sith believe in what they're doing. It might not be right, but they believe that what they're doing is the best thing that they should do to get power. That's resolve. The Jedi believe in what they're doing. They're trying to stop evil. That is resolve. The force will bless anyone with resolve. That's it. So we have the circle. One side falls, one side rises, passes through the mirror line. When you go through the mirror line, everything's backwards. Falling, rising, backwards, okay? So our first move, we have the circle here, we'll extend the circle out. So I meant from close to my body to away from my body. Circle is still there, right? This is the front side, it's facing you guys. We'll call this light. It also has a back side. It's away from you guys. We'll call this dark. Together you create a figure eight, which is the infinity symbol. This is the force. This is the force, and this is the force. It's the balance between two energies, front, back. Together creates the force. Right? Now also in duality, anything that's opposite creates duality. So we have front and back, we also have up and down. So I have down, circle, I have up, circle. Down, circle, up, circle. The up is a little bit tricky, you want to imagine that you're painting with a paintbrush and you're drawing the biggest possible circle you can and it might tire out your shoulder and it might tire out your wrist, but go slow and relax as you do it so that you don't yank anything. It doesn't have to be fast. Practice transitioning from light to dark to light. The concept is that we're doing two circles and between the two circles we have high and we have low which creates light and dark. Now duality fractals for infinity in every direction. Which means when I look at something light compared to something else there's, there could be more light and there could be less light. And I could say that is darker, that is lighter than something else. I could have up and then I could have more up. And then I could have down and then I could have less down. And infinity fractals forever. So we have up or down, up, front, back, low, back, high. Now even though I'm in the dark side, I also have a light dark side and a darker dark side. I have an up and I have a down within the dark side. It's all perspective and it's a gauge. Together they make the figure eight. Right? So that's the concept. I know that was a lot. That was a lot. We're, that, we're past the philosophy part. Now we're going to learn to actual technique. Okay, so this whole mirror line concept has to do with spinning. It's actually ingrained in technique itself. So when I do a downward figure eight, which remember is a front circle and a back circle together creates a figure eight. Now we're going to do this on the wheel plane, which means you're going to do it on the wall in front of you where it doesn't cross in front. This is called the, the or sorry, we're doing on the wall plane. This is called the wheel plane the way it spins like a tire, we're not going to do it this way. We're going to do it on the wall plane as if you're standing in front of a wall and your saber can't touch the wall. So we're going to do figure eight downward here. We have regular and then we have high. Right? The only thing that's different is I'm lifting my hand but the figure eight is the same. It's the same concept as the circle and then the high circle, low back circle, high back circle. Together it makes a figure eight here, together it makes a figure eight here. All I'm doing is raising my hand, right, following the figure eight. Now when I pass through this position here, I'm now going up. So before here my sword is falling downward and this is the downward figure eight. When I go this way, I'm going up and this is an upward figure eight. So if I want to flow, I'm connecting these two together. See how my saber, it's fluid, it's fluid because it's the force. It's the unification of both sides. But what you're seeing actually is down, transitional point, up. Transitional point, down. Transitional point, up. And together you have a unified unit. We're doing figure eight on both sides except one side is down and one side is up. 
Now just like the upward figure eight, everything is in balance. Technique itself has existed in balance, which means if there is one side, there will be a mirror of the opposite side. So I'm here, I go here, now I'm up. I go here, now I'm down. I could go low and I could go high. I could go low and I could go high. If I connect the circle through the transitional point, I can make a circle. So I'm here. We're almost done with the hard stuff and then we'll go to practice. Okay, so now we're talking about the light side. So remember there was light light side, dark light side, dark dark light side, dark 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 side. Reverse grip, we call this dark side. We call this light side. The entire technique that I just explained exists in reverse grip because there's always balance. The more light there is, the more dark it will create. The more shadows it will create. The more dark it is, the more people have to rise to the occasion to defeat the dark. This is the balance of the force. If it goes too much in one direction, there will be an agent of change that will th bring things back to balance. Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker. Anakin brought the balance back to the dark side because it was off balance. It was too much on the light. When you go too much on the light, it created arrogance. And through arrogance, they stopped doing the things they were supposed to do, the things that made him Jedi's. They weren't, they weren't supposed to be politicians, they were supposed to be Jedi's, above the law, outside of the law. The moment they become arrogant, there's the transitional point to the dark side. You rise, and at the very top and at the very bottom, they meet at zero. Zero and 100 meet at the same place. 100% rise light to dark goes to 100%, to and then the fall happens to the dark side. And from the dark it rises, but from the light it will fall and vice versa. Luke Skywalker, when it went too far to the dark side, came as an agent of change to bring it back to the light. And this is the dance of the force. It goes from one side to the other. One side to the other. If you do too much of one side, it will pull you in the opposite direction. If you do too much in this direction, it will pull you to this direction. And this is the balance. Okay. Reverse grip is the dark side. Right? We're back to the same move. There's a circle in reverse grip. Uh, this one's a little awkward, so you want to try to bring your tip higher than you feel comfortable, yeah, than you feel comfortable with. There is a low circle, there is a high circle. There is a front circle, there is a back circle. It creates a figure eight. Every move that we talked about, you could raise and you could lower. Dark side, light side. I could transition to the light side. I could raise my hand, I could lower my hand. It creates a circle where everything's unified. But the technique itself, the trajectory that the sword spins is the force, right? So this, this trajectory of doing this move is the mechanics of this move. It doesn't care which direction my sword is facing. This is the law of this move. This is the law of momentum. This is the only possible way it could do it in the, in the most efficient way. There are other ways, but this is the most efficient way to do it. That is the force, right? It doesn't have an opinion whether I'm here doing the ob in reverse grip or if I'm doing a regular grip. Did you see the transition? I'm in reverse grip. I'm in regular grip. Nice. Uh, stay in the wheel plane. Instead of the, the, I mean the wall plane, not the wheel plane, but stay in the wall plane here. Yeah. Just because it'll give you cleaner lines. Okay. We'll do one last little bit. I'll teach you something that no one else has taught you. And then from there, we'll play a little bit. I know it was convoluted, but I was like, okay, I'm going to teach them not the things that they want, but the things that they need, which is philosophy. Okay. So we have this circle. Who here has ever been on a message board and someone says, pfft? That's fake. You could never use that in combat. Shut up. Yes, you can. Okay. The reason is we have this circle here. Right? We have this circle doing the figure eights. There's also a concept of the asterisk, which is the basic foundations of every cut that exists. 
The asterisk is an X and a plus sign. Every move follows into one of these archetypes. There might be variations of it, but they fall into an X or a plus sign. And then because it's the force, there's an inversion. There's the opposite, which is an upward X and an upward plus sign the other way. That is every cut that exists follows this. The asterisk, the X and the plus sign up, the X and the plus sign down. The force. Now, at every point of our circle, you could throw a cut. When I'm here in this plane, I could do a slash across here. Every time I switch, I switch from up to down. Cut, up, I could raise my sword higher, go down. I could go up. So this connects all of spin tech to every cut. At any point in time, you could do a twirl and a cut. And this suddenly unlocks combat with twirling. No longer it's not just spinning, it's spinning and cutting whenever you want to. Okay? This is how you transcend. If you only practice one move, you'd be like, okay, I'm here, I'm here, and set up and cut. But in actuality, the circle itself has the asterisk in the circle. Does that make sense? So the plus sign and the X exists as one of the planes inside the circle. And in fact, if you have infinite amount of lines, it creates the circle. Every different position is a different cut from a different variation, but the asterisk is the archetype. This position, this position, this position, here, here, like a clock. If you understand these concepts, it becomes easy and it unlocks a lot of really cool movement. Okay? So that was the main, main concept. The force could be explained through spinning because the force isn't, the, the force is the trajectory of where it moves. The force, force is the laws of momentum that exist for both sides. And the same spinning exists from both sides. Now, we're going to do something really cool. So, one way to understand the force is if I have one hand in reverse grip and one hand in regular grip, I could still do the same motions even though they're doing different movements. I'm doing the obi ante, but one's in reverse grip, one grip, one's in regular grip. Now watch this. This is the cool part. So I'm here. What happens when you put the two swords together? The tech is the same. The movement is the same. Nothing has changed. I have the asterisk. I have the spinning. Because two, a staff is two ends of a sword. You have the light and the dark. Together they create the force. And the force doesn't care which side you're using. We care because it sucks to be bad. And that's, what, that's how it becomes good. If you go all the way through the path of the dark side, eventually there's a moment where you will find absolute loneliness. And selfishness leads to loneliness. The Sith is about selfishness. What can I do for me? How can I get stronger? How can I get more power? How can I get things? The other side is compassion and, self and serving others. How can I help everyone else? Or how can I help everyone else? How can I help myself? When you help everyone else, there is a moment where you feel martyrism. You feel burnt out, you feel taken advantage of, and then you pass the mirror line. And suddenly you're like, I'm only gonna help myself. And you start falling to the dark side. And then you reach here and you realize all your friends are gone. And you're lonely. And then you have to turn your life around. And then you start going back up, helping others. And this is the circle of the force. This is why the balance tips from one side to the other. Because both extremes are not that good. And that's the two extremes, you're exact opposite away from each other. So I'll break it down even deeper for the true, true Star Wars fans. The mirror line is the father. The dark side is the brother. The light side is the sister. Or sorry, the, the dark side and the light side is the brother and the sister. The mother is the extreme darkness at 100%. That is chaos that pushes darkness to 100%. That forces 
light to have to rise to meet the occasion. That's what creates a Luke Skywalker, right? You have the potential to become a Luke Skywalker. Do it. Cool, awesome. Thanks guys for taking my workshop. Um, I'll show you guys, it. thank you. I'm teaching one every day on a different topic. Today was the philosophy of the force. Today was the most convoluted one out of all of them. But I knew that you guys could follow. So I taught it anyways. Tomorrow is gonna be meditation. It's entering the flow state through breath and through movement. We're gonna put down our sabers, we'll all move and learn how to enter the flow state, then we'll pick up the sabers and we'll learn how to do it through sabers. And then I'll teach you another really cool technique. On Sunday is for dual wielding. So I've done a lot of conventions and festivals and circus and through the Star Wars circuit and through everything. What I find is sometimes we have a student who's really, really good, who took the time to teach themselves, who's reached a moment where they think they've plateaued in what they know, right? And every time they go to a festival or somewhere else, they're the ones who are always teaching. And every time someone helps them, they give them a drill and they neglect them and tell them to work by themselves because you got to work with everybody. I have a workshop just for you. And if you're my only student in my workshop, I will be happy, okay? It's for the people who have reached a level and I'm gonna take you to the next level, okay? You ready? You're gonna be here Sunday? Cool, cool, cool. Okay, now, when we're spinning, the most important thing is a part of it is understanding the movement and the choreography. With two hands, a part of it is separating your brain, but a big part is muscular tension in the body. This is what people don't tell you. For some people, it is literally impossible to do this. And the teacher who doesn't understand this will have a student who will get injured, right? I'll tell you, do more, do harder, and then you hurt your shoulder. But what it has to do is it has to do with the flexibility of the wrist and the flexibility of the shoulder. Now here's the secret. If you relax and move really gently through the motions, you will not get hurt. If you try to force your body in a position that it cannot do, something has to break. You'll either break your lightsaber or you'll break your wrist or you'll break your, something has to break. The energy has to go somewhere, right? The main thing to do is warm up before you go, move your wrists, get energy to flow through your wrists, warm up your shoulders. The second thing is through your motions, be as lazy and relaxed as possible. Don't force anything. Let your body understand the choreography first. And then from there, feel the transitional points. Go slow. Break it down. Go slow. Be relaxed. Now, what you have to do is learn how to breathe out. Everyone knows how to breathe in, but whenever we're hyper-focusing on something, we hold our breath. If you breathe out, your body can relax. The less tension you have, the easier it is to move. So we'll start with the Obiani. This move over here, the way to learn it is behind the back. Turn your body, release the saber. The reason is because most people don't have the flexibility in their shoulder to do this. And if you don't have the flexibility, all the pressure is gonna go to the shoulder and you're gonna hurt your shoulder. The way you fix this is you go from behind the back and then you just tip your sword forward in front. Slow, slow, much slower. So go behind the back, then from here just tip your sword forward in front. There you go. And see if you can get it directly in front of you like aiming towards your belly button, directly in front. Nice, 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 nice. Now, this move is an illusion. My movement of my hips creates the illusion. So when I'm here, I go behind my back, I turn my body, I bring my sword in front to face my belly button. Right, but because I'm turning my body, it's creating the circle. This is what you do in the beginning because if you haven't built the shoulder flexibility, you could hurt your shoulder. Go slow, don't yank it. So you're here, behind the back, turn your body, Bring your sword forward, upward figure eight. Go here, behind the back, pause, turn your body, upward figure eight. Gradually, as you get better at this, you could turn less and less. Eventually, you'll be able to not turn at all. It becomes a choice. I could turn if I want to, or I could stay in the same spot. It becomes a choice, and when it's a choice, you could do whatever you want, and the sword becomes your friend, okay? Awesome, thanks for taking my workshop. I hope you guys have a blast at Rebel Scum Con. They did a solid, they brought me out here and they allowed me to teach these workshops so I could drop knowledge on you guys. Please come back every single day, tomorrow, 2 p.m. We're gonna learn about meditation and how to tap into the force, how to feel what it feels to be in the flow state. On Sunday, it's gonna be advanced class. It's for dual wielding. 
It's how to separate your brain to work on both sides. It's how to use single point isolation to open up the mechanics of the shoulder. It's how to weave cutting and spinning. So I'll give you a little preview. Basically, our brain holds each move in a different region of the brain. So this already is pretty cool and pretty hard, right? This is all on the wall plane, and this is all spinning in the same direction. It's the same technique. My brain stores half of this information on one side through cross patterns and half the information on this side. By practicing both sides, I connect the two sides for one idea. This right here is only level one. These are the basics of level one. Level two is changing your planes. Wheel plane, wall plane. Wheel plane, wall plane. That connects back to wheel plane, back to wall plane. Level three is cutting and spinning. Different techniques. One hand spins, one hand cuts. It allows you to actually fight while doing the motions. Level four, I will explain on Sunday. But it shows you there's levels to this. That is just the basics. And it's good, if you got there, that means you're already better than 95% of the people. But a lot of the people get stuck when they get there. They get there and they're like, okay, I don't know what else to learn. There's no other teachers who could teach me. That's level one. That means you're ready for level two. And it keeps going. There's levels and levels. And it's fun because when you have something to work on and you have a goal, you could come back next year and you could be like, look, I've been working on this for six months. This is what I've unlocked. I am getting closer to becoming a Jedi. I'm getting closer to becoming a Sith. And I'm understanding the Force. Thanks for taking my workshop. See you guys around. I have a panel in the celebrity room, so I'm Darth Vader. Come by, say hi. <laughs>